Welcome to For the Love of Books, a podcast by North Latcher Libraries. Hi everyone, welcome back to the North Latcher Libraries podcast for the love of books. My name is Chris Wilson and for today's episode we are in the very Scottish feeling after it being St Andrew's Day yesterday. So I have got in touch with a few of my colleagues who are going to give us their recommendations for some of their favourite Scottish authors. And you can maybe check them out and see if you think they're as good as our, our colleagues think they are as well. And after that, we'll also be revealing the shortlist for our Book of the Year poll, which we do at the end of each year. And it's also got a Scottish theme as well. The eight people or the eight books that have been picked for the shortlist is based on the most issued books from our libraries that are Scottish based and and released in the last year as well. So you can find out which books you can try and vote for and see if there's any of your favourites on there and afterwards you can go and vote on our website for your favourite as well. But here's the first of our colleagues who will be letting you know about our their favourite author and you can listen in now. Hi, I'm Alison, one of the librarians at Coatbridge Library, and today for St Andrew's Day, I'd like to tell you a bit about one of my favourite Scottish writers, the late Ian Banks. Banks' books are set in a Scotland that is familiar to us, yet also unfamiliar. His characters are vividly drawn, and we immediately find ourselves immersed, whether that's in the bizarrely disturbing world of a child psychopath in the Wasp Factory, or in the music world of Espadier Street, or in the corrupt, journalistic, vice-filled world of complicity. My favourite though is The Crow Road, mainly because I was so traumatised by a scene in The Wasp Factory that I can still remember when and where I was when I read it, which I think may be unique in my reading experience. But despite its seemingly less shocking subject matter, The Crow Road is still a vividly imaginative novel with probably one of the best openings in Scottish writing. It begins, It was the day my grandmother exploded. I sat in the crematorium, listening to my Uncle Hamish quietly snoring in harmony to Bach's Mass in B minor, and I reflected that it always seemed to be death that drew me back to Gallanach. Prentice McHone has returned to the bosom of his complex Scottish family, full of questions about the McHone past, present and future, but he's also deeply preoccupied with subjects of death, sex, drink, God and illegal substances. Now, being honest, I first discovered Dean Banks as a student, and perhaps some of these themes did appeal more to me then. But his wit and his gift with language means that I am sure that the novels of Ian Banks can be enjoyed no matter where in life you are when you discover them. Scottish author I'd recommend is crime writer Doug Johnson. I first came across this author with his book The Ossians, which is about a young group of musicians called the Ossians, who head out on a tour of Scotland, particularly through some of the smaller towns in the Highlands. And lead singer Connor is your sort of typical band lead singer character. But he, throughout the tour, is forced into delivering and receiving packages in payment for what he owes to his local drug dealer. It's a bit crazy. Um, the gigs are not always straightforward. And throughout the whole trip, the band members are coming to terms with themselves. And Connor is really realising that he can be self-destructive and he has to fight his demons. And the tour forces some big changes for all of them. But more recently, I've been reading the, or starting the series of um, what are known as the Skelf books. So, so far I've read, in that I've read A Dark Matter and The Big Chill. These are a series of crime fit books about three generations of women in the Skelf family who take over the family funeral home in Edinburgh, and also start a private investigator business. So at the beginning of it all, the head of the funeral home, um, Jim, dies. 
and his wife and daughter and granddaughter decide to take over the family firm. But nothing is ever straightforward. And although they're surrounded by death, they, they're forced to confront their own thoughts, their own attitudes to it, while trying to find the answers to what's going on with some other crimes and look at how everything is connected together. It sounds a bit weird. It, For some, it might sound a wee bit distasteful, but it's a great location and, and, and a great setting for these three fantastic women to show how family bonds people together, how we hide things from each other, and how those around you can help you or can be really out to get you. I'm looking forward to picking up the other two books that have been written so far in this series in the coming months. Um, they're good kind of who's done it, as far as I know so far, and I'd recommend you dipping into them. And if it still doesn't sound like quite your cup of tea, then Doug Johnson is the drummer in the fun, loving crime writers. Go and have a look for them and see who else you recognise. Okay, some books by Scottish authors. I liked Finger of Suspicion by Dale Dawson, which is a semi-autobiographical, cum-fictional novelisation of events in Strathclyde Police between 1990 and 2003. But what I really liked about that were the references to the main character's family and the descriptions of the family and how the family interacted as they were growing up, particularly the brother who goes off and does his own thing. Um, don't we all aspire to do that kind of thing? Another Scottish author that I really enjoyed their debut novel was Sophie Gravia, A Glasgow Kiss, where her character's approaching dirty and it's time to settle down or grow up and get a proper job. The things that happen in A Glasgow Kiss are typical, I would say, personally, of a girl's night out. The futile attempts at maintaining your dignity when you're in the face of an ex and his new partner and the ridiculous shenanigans that ensue. But my first proper introduction, I would say, to a Scottish author and an author that I go back to regularly and an author whose first book I go back to is Des Dillon. I suppose in part I like Des because he's from Coatbridge, so he's fairly local. I like the style of his writing because he writes the way we talk. And if you consider that history is passed on by our elders sitting round a campfire telling tales, then Des Dillon's debut novel, Me and My Gal, back in 1995, is a historic description of growing up working class in the 70s and 80s, certainly in Lanarkshire, if not in Scotland. The descriptions of Coat Bridge, the language they used, which are all colourful, it's very accurate. And the nicknames given to characters like Strangled Joe, very dramatic in the eyes of a child. But it's not so much a look back in time, but an immersion into a day in the life of the characters. And having experienced that in me and my gal, he goes on to create fully robust four-dimensional characters that if you haven't met someone like them, you've heard a story about them. Or you certainly have by the time Des is finished with you. So having read Me and My Gal and thoroughly enjoyed and related to it, I've then gone on to read pretty much everything 
I think Daisy's in. My particular favourites are Duck, Ichiku Blue, Six Black Candles, My Epileptic Lurcher, The Big Q, which is also titled Monks, and let us not forget some of Desi's more extravagant storylines in River City. I always like River City when Desi's on the script writing team. So yeah, Des Dillon, Coatbridge native and one of my favourite Scottish authors. I'm Thomas Clark from Coatbridge Library and my favourite Scottish writer is William McIlvanny. Now William McIlvanny is most famous now for his trilogy of gritty crime novels set in Glasgow, the Laid Law trilogy, and they're fantastic books and they uh, in many ways started off what is now the Scottish crime genre. But my favourite books of William McIlvanny's are actually his numerous other books which are just about ordinary working class lives and working class people. The two which really spring, spring to mind are Doherty and The Kiln, which are kind of, um, well, The Kiln's kind of a sequel to Doherty and they're about a mining family in Ayrshire and later on The Kiln is about the descendants of that mining family and they are really about what it is like to have lived and worked in the mines and to be descended from the people who lived and worked in the mines in Scotland and it's they're fantastic books but William McIlvanny, my favourite writer. Hi, I'm Letty, I work in Coatbridge Library and the Scottish writer I recommend is Kirsty Logan. Um, she's a Glasgow-based writer whose work has a load of fairy tale and folklore influence and is steeped in both the Highland landscapes where she grew up and Scots language. Um, and it also has a queer influence, which is really interesting and cool to see. Um, and I'd particularly recommend her short story collections, such as A Portable Shelter, which is a collection of tales framed as being told to an unborn baby by their mothers. Um, and Things We Say in the Dark is another fantastic book if you're looking for something a bit spookier. Um, it's a collection of queer and feminist horror and ghost stories and has some really grisly and interesting stories that are fantastic to dig into on a dark winter night. So there you have some fantastic author recommendations from our staff. Uh, there's some real hidden gems in there and some other but maybe a little bit more well-known authors as well for you to catch up with as well if you haven't checked them out before already. I hope you find somebody in amongst that that really catches your eye and that you want to check out. But as we said at the start of the episode, we are going to reveal our shortlist for our Book of the Year poll. And it is, without further ado, I get a chance to reveal what those are. So, based on the most issued books in our libraries for this year, the shortlist consists of the following titles. It is Liam McIlvanny's The Heretic, Alex Gray's Echo of the Dead, Stuart McBride, No Less the Devil, Douglas Stewart, Young Mungo, Alan Parks, May God Forgive, Denise Miner, Confidence, Janie Godley, Nothing Left Unsaid, and Denzel Merrick, and The Death of Remembrance. So that is a, that is your choices for the book of the year. There are some fantastic books in there. Um, it does show that a lot of our library members are quite clear crime fans, but there are a few other genres in there as well for you to have a look at too. So it's a great set of books, and they are very, very fantastic authors as well. If you have read one and one stood out to you, do come along to our website, and you'll find that on our website at culturenl.co.uk slash book of the year and you can check out the how the voting is going and also submit your vote to make sure that the, your favourite has got the best chance to win our vote for this year. You can also have a look back on the webpage and find out what has won in previous years as well. There has been some really good books who have won in the previous votes that we've had near the end of the year and the previous years as well. And it's just a fantastic little way how to end the year to give a little bit of recognition to some of the great books that have been out about that year as well. So I hope you enjoy the episode so far guys and you have enjoyed 
listening to some of the recommendations and I hope you do submit your vote as well and get your voice heard for the book of the year. That's all for now for us guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast and the if you as always you can leave us some feedback using the hashtag hashtag FLB podcast or by using the email address librarypodcast at northland.gov.uk and drop us a little note. But that's all for us for now, guys, and I hope you enjoy the start of the Christmas period as it comes, and we'll be back again with our final episode of the year, which will have a Christmassy theme. But until then, that's all for now. Bye, guys.